Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Cooks the Great, aka CTG, and I'm back at you guys. Bro, get up. Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your big homie Crooks the Great, aka Big Unk Crooks, and I'm back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 5 breakdown video. And today we're going to be breaking down a matchup between two of the best players in the world in GOAT 1099 and Romero 17. Now, if you guys didn't know, these guys fought for the ESFL gold yesterday at the last uh, ESFL event. And it was a really, really crazy, crazy fight. So I had to break it down. So in this matchup, GOAT's going to be using Sean O'Malley and Romero 17 is going to be using Umar Nurmagomedov. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So Goat was up at this point one nothing in the best of three. So if he wins this, he basically not only claims the ESFL gold again and defends it, he's going to be pushed as the best player in the world. That's really what's riding on the line here. And the first thing I want to point out is this guy, these guys' footy work is absolutely crazy. If you're able to work in the footy work game like these guys have it, you're going to have a lot of success. You see both guys just jockeying for position. You see Goat right there with the stance switch just to give Romero a different look. Romero's going for the clinch because that's where he knows he's going to have that advantage. He's in the grappling uh, in the grappling aspect. And there he makes a real... Goat makes a really, really big mistake. And now Romero has him going for a finish right here. Mixing up those ground and pound strikes. But Goat is able to survive. Very, very... Big mistake right there by GOAT1099 to start off the fight because, uh, yeah, he could have gotten finished. And luckily, he didn't. I, th I feel like uh, Sean O'Malley's his chin status, excuse me, really, really saved him. Able to get back to his feet. But now all the momentum is on Romero's side. He has gotten that stun, and GOAT has to get it back. That's the tricky part against really, really good players is once they get momentum, they're really, really good at staying in the lead most of the time. And that's where a lot of people make mistakes. Goat's working himself back in. See, they're mixing up the tempo of the strikes. They're not just throwing at the same pattern every single time. I like the pressure from Romero. He's doing a really, really good job of, of trying to maintain octagon control. That was something that I noticed when I watched this fight live, was, uh, that he was he was trying to make Goat feel uncomfortable by not allowing Goat to back him up. They're nice straight. Nice calf kick. Blitzing forward a little bit. Nice jab hook. Breaks through the block. Both these guys are just playing footy. Hopping in and out of those ranges. Nice lead hook right there by Romero. Does some solid damage. And now with 20 seconds left, this is Romero's round. This really is Romero's round. He's done, he's done really, really, really nice work in this round. It looks like Goat is just content with going to the next round as the first round ends right there. Very, very high level stuff. And it really it really is going to come down to whoever makes the first mistake. I mean, if somebody's going to get finished, it's because a mistake is made. And with the guys that are up at this level, it really only takes one. Because if they're able to get a stun on you, like right there, you see he immediately knocked him down. And it, it could be lights out for you. So... Very, very good first round from Romero, but I expect Goat to come back. I expected Goat to come back in this fight. Let's see how he does it. There you see Romero faint that takedown. And now that could really be important because like I said, Umar, he does his greatest attribute and his greatest stat against Sean O'Malley is gonna be that grappling. You're gonna be using Umar, you have to try to grapple Sean O'Malley at some point. 
you don't always have to be blitzing forward but you want to try to do it at some point as he hurts him again on the feet right there off of another bad exchange by goat 1099 now you see both guys playing a little bit of footsies mixing up the striking tempo I like the patience that Romero 17 is showing, but the one thing that comes with patience is you allow, sometimes you allow your opponents to work themselves back into a fight. That's what Goat's doing. You see him popping off these one to two piece combinations. He's just getting that timing back. He's landing that damage to get his confidence back up. Nice body kick into a body jab. Nice double jab into a straight. Now you see he's busted up. Busted up uh, Umar's nose a little bit. Nice jab hook. And now you see Goats getting Romero a little bit on the back foot. And you see what it's causing Romero to do. It's causing him to start to shoot for takedowns a little bit more than I, or a little bit sooner than what I think he would like to. Nice slip off by Romero right there, but you see Goats confidence is back up. That's a nice calf kick stops that takedown that's something that i've been telling people for years man leg kicks prevent takedowns if timed out correctly they'll cut off that takedown animation this round has been all goat 1099 he did get stunned well let me not say that he got stunned earlier in the round but ever since then he's really started to really dictate the pace to Romero right there as he hit a nice pull counter but there's Romero going for that takedown nice takedown defense right there by go 1099 though and look at the look at the stamina lead that goat is starting to starting to develop it's not really it's not really big but it's it could start to really become a problem for Romero if he doesn't watch it Double leg bail. Nice trip attempt right there by Goat. Now I want to pause it because I want to go over. For those of you guys that don't know against the double leg bail, if somebody double leg bails you and you instantly input an inside trip and they don't deny it, you're going to get a takedown every single time. So that was a good read right there by Goat 1099. He's seen the double leg bail. He went for the inside trip and he was able to uh, he was able to stop the takedown. But right here, let's see if. Romero's able to get the power single and he's not. Right there, now we see Goat breaking the block a little bit and that's the end of the second round. Now, a nice comeback from Goat in that round. He did get hurt, um, but he was able to make a nice clean comeback and built some momentum heading into this third round. Now we're gonna see if Goat is able to make a comeback here in this fight based off of the momentum that he was able to build and see Romero felt it. He knew what was going on, so he immediately shot for that takedown. We see Goat walking forward a little bit. Romero shoots for another single leg and he's able to get him down this time. Very, very nice timing on the takedown. And it's something new that Goat really hasn't seen too much of. This fight has not really been taken down to the ground too many times other than the knockdown in the first round. Here, both guys punching, trying to trade that GA. Nice fake right there by Romero, gaining him a little bit of GA. He's posturing up. Goat's doing a good job of just staying patient. Staying patient, denying the transitions, and here he's able to get an arm bar. Now that stamina lead is in favor of Sugar Sean O'Malley. And we see Romero fake twice. Goat's gonna be able to lock that arm bar in right there. And let me tell you, let me pause it real quick so I can tell you. That really goes a long ways for Goat. Not only does it secure the round if nothing big happens for Romero in this round, but it also drains that stamina down. The long-term stamina bar goes down because the, the stamina, the cooking, atom, uh, the cooking mechanic in the game. But it also lets Romero know that, hey, even if you take me down, I'm still a threat. You still have to watch out with what you're doing on the ground. You can't just freely go for transitions left, right, 
if I block one, I am going to be going for submissions. And although obviously you guys seen the bar didn't go down like at a really, really big in a really, really big way. It only went down about 25%, but it's, it's kind of the intent behind it. It's kind of the thought process behind it is he's threatening with these subs. So it's really going to make Romero have to be on his P's and Q's, even in the grappling aspect, which honestly could sometimes be troubling. I'm not going to lie. Here, they're back, punching, punching each other, trying to jockey for that GA. Nice denial right there by Romero. Fakes to Kimura. He actually went for it that time. He was trying to get that submission back. Nice job by Romero right there, getting back to the half guard. But Goat is just salting this round away. Really just salting it away, man. Like, he's just, he's content. Just punching the body. If it gets stood up, that's where really where his fighter shines at, so it's okay. He's blocking that transition right there. Faking. He's got max GA. Nice. Another Kimura attempt right there. He tries to posture up. Now, Romero did a really good job of being throwing in a submission threat right there. Go wisely gets back up to his feet. But look at how much time is left. There's only a minute left, even with Romero getting the takedown. Unless he does something really, really drastic here, this is going to be Goat's round. Go did a good job of denying that Darsh choke. Romero did a good job of denying the down transition. But now this could be a little bit of trouble if Romero is able to play this correctly. He tries to go for the down transition to get a better, a dominant grappling position, but Do Go did a good job of denying it right there. And now he's right back into side control. Now with 15 seconds left, I mean, this is a this is a really, really dominant round by Go. Right, and that's the end of the third round. Now this, in my opinion, is really where uh, the fight kind of started to change because Romero shot for a takedown and that's really where he was gonna have the statistical advantage, was gonna be on the ground with GOAT. But now that GOAT has nullified it and threatened Jiu-Jitsu on the ground, it's a whole different ball game because now Romero knows and GOAT knows, hey, you know, I can catch you with a submission. There you see Romero trying to fight back. He's trying to keep Goat off of him. Goat's using that nice quick footwork of Sean O'Malley. And you see the stamina lead is in favor of a little bit of Goat 1099, but it's not too bad, like I said. I was launching off a combination. are kind of just being really really patient trying to take it really really careful because all it takes like i said is one mistake we've seen what happened in the first round and in the second round for that matter guys kind of just playing it off at distance this could be dangerous for both guys because umar can shoot for that ankle pick from out from the outside as we see right there, and he's able to get the single leg turn into side control. This is a this is a whole world of trouble. If he's able to just drain that cardio down of Sean O'Malley. Goat did a really, really good job of getting sprawl. But Romero did a good job of getting backside. And it looked like he was trying to posture up right there. Goat did a good job of rolling the full guard, but Romero countered right there with jumping the side uh, to half guard. And then he's able to get the full mount. Now, this is trouble. This is really, really big trouble because now the arm bar is in favor of Romero 17. And Goat, you see Goat trying to pump out those fakes. Romero bit on that one to drain the stamina down. And now they're both in a race. And Umar's going to be able to lock in that arm bar. So just like in the last round where Goat got it, now Romero 
really, really big threat because all it's gonna take is one more sub and Romero's gonna be able to claim it. Now, a really good job right there by GOAT1099 getting the sprawl position. So now, ooh, look at that. Romero jumps for that gilly. Drain the stamina all the way down, but that submission is really, really hard to get. And Goat is able to escape and get back to half guard and get back to his feet. Very, very clean and patient work from Goat 1099. And then he hits him with the taunt. Letting him know, you ain't gonna get me with that one. Herb finally does his job and gets Umar back to his feet. And now look at both men's stamina, man. And there it is, a clean drop on the jab hook. A mistake again right there by GOAT1099. But then he comes back and knocks Romero down. I mean, it's just... That's a crazy, crazy... I mean, look at Kingsley's face. Look at Kingsley and Frank's face, man. That just really tells you the whole story of the fight, man. It's, it's, it, it, that was a crazy, crazy last 30 seconds. And really, it could have swayed the, the round in favor of GOAT, even though... You know, Romero got a sub and a knockdown. But, you know, UFC 5 judges are ridiculous. So, this is the last round. And this is really anybody's fight. These rounds are really, really close. Here you see Goat Pressure and Nice Takedown Denial right there. I go 1099. Putting on the pressure. really gonna come down to whoever makes a mistake first man really really is see go right there with the beautifully timed head kick and it just barely didn't break down the block of Romero but in this round it, with the way that the pace is going right now it favors go if he's able to deny that transition to the back to the backpack which he did it really, really favors GOAT because this is going to primarily be taking place on the feet. Romero can't chain takedowns together. He can really only see, shoot single shots. And since GOAT has seen and got a feel for the takedowns of Romero, it's going to be really, really difficult for Romero to get it here in the fifth round. The GOAT landing some damaging shots. Romero shoots again. GOAT's on the denial again right there. Romero try to go for a transition. Go did a really, really good job of denying it. Working that body held down little by little. Gets back to the feet. Now with two minutes left, this, this round really is Goat's round. It has been Goat's round so far. Landing those nicely, those nicely timed knees to the body, pushing them up against the fence. Now, what I would like to see from Romero is right there, going for the clinch and reversing the cage position. Something that I preach to you guys a lot on the channel is utilizing that clinch position when you're being pressured. To really, really come in clutch. You see Umar just staggering around because that cardio is just it's depleted as hell. But Sean O'Malley has slowed down as well. All it's gonna take is one counter could be a problem. You see him going for the turning takedown. Nice denial right there by GOAT1099. Back on the pressure. He shoots for another single leg, and this time he's able to get him into side control. Now let's see if Romero is able to do anything to really secure this round that's that's really been all GOAT so far. You see right there, he goes for the Kimura. He's trying to get the submission, but that's another really, really tough one to get in UFC 5. GOAT's able to regain that full guard. I don't think that's going to be enough to win this round for Romero as he tries to lock in an arm triangle as the fifth round ends. I mean, a completely, completely crazy fight. I mean, it could go either way. Going to the judges scorecards, it really, really could. Uh, I mean, Romero arguably could have won three rounds, right? He, he got a drop in the first. He got a stun in the second. And then he came back in the fourth and got a stun as well. But he did get knocked down at the end of that round. As you see, this sequence right there is what got Goat the knockdown. And then Goat was able to come back in that fifth round. So this is really anybody's fight. <laughs> it really, really is.
Let's see who the judges give it to. Dana's standing there, waiting to give the winner the belt. Both guys' faces completely busted up, but it's GOAT 1099 who is able to get the dub and basically secure himself as the best player in UFC 5 right now. I mean, hands down, he when one goes up against two or two goes one A goes up against one B, the winner of the fight is the is considered the best player in the world. And that right now is GOAT 1099. But Romero 17 is not far off. That was just a crazy, crazy fight, ladies and gentlemen. And it was super close. I really, when I was watching this live, like I said, I, I really didn't know who won this fight. I really, really didn't. But shout out to GOAT1099. He did his thing. He is officially the season one champ for the ESFL season. So shout out to him. Shout out to Romero 17. Both of these guys are content creators. So make sure you guys go and peep out their streams their videos and different things like that. But that's it for the video, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. It'd be much appreciated. But until next time, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.